Hello. Hi, singers. Are you guys good to actually sing together today? Yes. Okay. What did you say? You thought I said hello, sinners. I mean that too. Hey. <laughs> sinners saved by grace. Hello. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy to be here. It's good to see all of you. Um, I want to give you my email address right now because I mentioned that in the last session. I forgot at the end. <laughs> I'll give it to you now so I don't forget. Just in case you have more questions after today, I'd love to just, you know, serve you. Um, so my name is AJ, and my email address is ajl at citylifephilly, C-I-T-Y-L-I-F-E, P-H-I-L-L-Y dot com. And then I also want to um, make another resource available to you. So I have some cards um, with a QR code that if you want to grab one, you can at the end of the session. But I'm also going to give you the URL because I'm, I'm kind of running out of cards. I didn't bring enough. I didn't plan this well. Um, but I have a, a program called Ready, Set, Worship that um, some of my team members and I developed to train worship leaders on vocal technique, um, the spiritual side of worship leading, a lot of those things, team building. Um, it's called Ready, Set, Worship. Um, and again, I have some cards if you want to grab one, but I'll also just give you the direct URL, and it's citylifephilly.com, C-I-T-Y-L-I-F-E-P-H-I-L-L-Y.com slash ready, set, worship. And um, if you're interested in that, just a free PDF. You can use it for your own growth. You can share it with your team. You can spread it around however much you want. It's just yours to use. Okay, so we are going to do some technique today. And I'm so glad that you saw the word technique on the paper and you still wanted to come. Because I think some te sometimes technique sounds a little scary, but it's important. Why do you guys think it's important? What did you say? To preserve. To preserve. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. We have been given voices by God, right? We've been given physically the voice and then the opportunity to use it in some capacity at our church. And we don't want to burn it out in a couple years. We want to be able to sing forever. So absolutely. What's another reason that technique is important? Yes, so you don't injure yourself. And vocal injury is real. And thank God it hasn't happened to me, but it happened to my mom. It's happened to some of my close friends. And you just don't, you don't want that. So I'll, I'll show you some things to help prevent that. Anything else? Yes. Uh, you want to do things in excellence. Yes, absolutely. You want to do things in excellence. And we talked about that in, in the last session if, for some of my friends who were there for that one too. But excellence is doing the best you can with what you have. It's not perfection. Um, but we always want to be growing and being able to give our best. So sometimes there are moments where your voice just doesn't want to do what you want it to do. And technique really helps you start to expand that. So you guys are all on board that this is important. Great. That's the first thing. <laughs> um, so whenever I have an opportunity to talk to singers, I like to share something about the heart behind this. And this is not technique related for a moment. Um, but I just want to quickly talk to you about competition versus comparison. Um, so competition and comparison are both really dangerous, okay? But I'm going to tell you about a type of comparison that's okay. Um, but competition is trying to be better than someone else, right? Trying to beat them out. Comparison is looking at other people and seeing how you measure up to whatever that is, right, that they do. And I think competition is a little obvious. Um, I'm sure that, like, you know, we've all struggled with it at some point. But it's pretty blatant, whereas comparison is insidious, okay? Comparison looks like she has such a beautiful voice. I just, I just don't, I don't sound that good. And maybe I should just not do this anymore. Or how come when this person spoke out at the end of the song, everybody in the room started crying, and when I spoke out at the end of the song, everybody looked like, right? Have you had these thoughts? So these are thoughts of comparison, and it's human, okay? Like we all, I'm not saying like we're awful if we have those thoughts, but it's important to redirect them, right? To take every thought captive unto Christ. Um, so here's a really practical way to take those thoughts captive. Instead of comparing yourself to other people, compare yourself to yourself. 
a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, and look at how far you've come as you have um, trusted in God to help you grow in the gift he gave you. And you can look at very practical things in your technique or in your worship leading that maybe weren't where they are now a couple months ago. And isn't that encouraging? Like if, if your church live streams and, you, and you're able to go back and, and listen to a recording from last month and, and then you realize like, I sing that song a lot better today. Well, that's cool, right? And then you can think, all right, what's the goal that I want to set for a couple months from now? Maybe it's something in my range Maybe it's a song that I'm not comfortable leading. It kind of scares me. And I want to get really good at like owning that in the room and like leading people confidently, right, and humbly. So whatever that goal is, I just want to encourage you, compare yourself to yourself, not to anybody else. Look at where you were before. Look at where you want to be and let the Lord um, take you there as you grow and you're faithful with your gift, right? So that's the heart behind all of this. So we don't learn techniques so that we can be better than the next person, but we learn techniques so that we can steward our gift really, really well and always keep growing in it. Okay, so I'm gonna move over to the piano and we're gonna sing together. Okay, but before we sing, there's something else that we have to talk about that's really crucial. Does anybody know what we have to do before we can even talk about making sound? Warm up, yeah, well, yeah, but that counts as making sound. Breathe. Did somebody say pray? Yeah. That's good too, absolutely. <laughs> Always. Um, but let's talk about breathing. So everyone breathes, <laughs> right? But there are ways that we can breathe that are not super helpful for our voices in terms of preserving them and getting the best sound possible out of our voices. So raise your hand if you've heard of the term diaphragmatic breathing. Great. Okay. If, if you haven't, that's cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. So everybody stand up. And I want you to put one hand here on your stomach and then the other hand here on your chest. So if I were to ask the average person to take a deep breath, they would go something like this. And their chest would expand and their shoulders would, would go up. And that is not the way that we want to breathe as singers. Here's why. It puts all of the strain on our vocal cords. And even when I just did that to expand, I felt like, ah, like that in my throat. Um, it's just a really kind of shallow and strained way of breathing. So instead, what we want to do is we want to engage the diaphragm, which sits right here under your ring, under your ribs, and it aids the lungs in taking in air. And when you breathe from your diaphragm, you feel your stomach and your back expanding like a balloon, and you don't feel this moving. And this is actually the way babies breathe. I don't know why we unlearn it, but I just want you to know that when you learn to breathe from your diaphragm, you're learning something that you already know that you were designed to do, and we just have to get back to it. This takes time, by the way. If this is new to you, you probably won't master it today, and that's totally cool. But let's just start to notice what this feels like. And when you're at home, you can practice this lying on your back because you will naturally do this on your back too. So let's just take a few deep breaths together and try to feel all of that breath coming from here. And like I said, expanding like a balloon, not pushing the muscle out because that's not doing it but just feeling your breath coming from there and feeling no breath coming from here. So you don't want this to move, you want this to move. So let's just try it again on your own time. Take three really deep breaths. How does that feel? Did anyone tell me if you didn't do this before today but you're starting to kind of feel it a little bit? No, <laughs> we need more work, okay? That's okay, I told you it takes time. Um, definitely practice lying on your back, okay? That's gonna help so much. And then you wanna transfer what it feels like on your back to standing up. You can, if you can do it lying down, you can do it now. And certainly if you could do it as a baby, you can do it now, right? You just gotta get back to it. So that's the first thing is breathing. It's so important because it, again, helps preserve our voices. I love that, such a good word, preserve. Um, so throughout our, our singing today, I'm going to remind you to check in with your breathing. Also, breathing is just so centering. It's so healthy to just take a moment and breathe. If anybody has an Apple watch, sometimes it sends you those reminders to breathe. Make reminders for yourself throughout the day. Breathe. Breathe from your diaphragm. And if you can breathe like that all the time, not just when you're singing, then it's going to be second nature when you're singing and you don't even have to think about it. 
The point of all of this, the point of studying tech, technique is so that we don't have to think about it when we're leading worship because you don't wanna be leading worship thinking about, am I breathing right? Am I gonna hurt my voice today? Can I hit that note? Like, you don't wanna think about that. You wanna have it all worked out ahead of time. Cool? Okay, now we get to sing. Okay, so we're gonna start with a humming exercise. So humming is really good for our voices because our vocal cords like to be together. They're side by side and they like to be touching. When they're touching, they're healthy and they're not stressed out. Humming or these kind of things, um, or also going NG, like that, those all force our vocal cords to be together and that's a great way to warm up. And why do we warm up? So we can sing properly, right? So warming up has two purposes. One purpose is to get us ready for that day, right? So if you are going to do like a really crazy intense workout, you wouldn't just go into like lifting 40 pounds, right? You'd like move around first. You'd maybe like do some jumping jacks. So warming up is important so we don't hurt ourselves. And the other thing is when we do these warm-ups, they're also just exercises. That is the working out. It's the thing that stretches our voices, that makes them stronger, and that builds what we can do. So a great way to start warming up is humming because it's gentle and it keeps our vocal cords together. So let's do this together. We're just going to sing a three-note scale on a hum. And when you hum, I want you to start with your mouth open. Ha. And then just close your lips and keep your mouth open like this. Ha, mm. So your mouth should feel hollow inside. You're going to feel resonance and buzzing in your lips. Okay? That's a good thing if you feel that. Here we go. Mm. Mm. And sing whatever octave is comfortable for you, by the way. Now let's come down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Breathe from your diaphragm if you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you feel it's starting to kind of warm up and wake up, right? Okay. Um, so humming is good for that. NG is good for that. You could take that same exercise and go. Just like that. You could also do. Although not everybody can do that. It's like genetic or something. <laughs> no worries if you can't do it. Um, so those are really good ways to just wake up the voice. It's very gentle. Notice that what we did was kind of in the middle of of most people's range, we don't wanna start warming up at the extremes of our range. That wouldn't be healthy because it's easier to injure yourself at the extremes of your range if you are not warmed up. By the way, if you wanna record this session and practice with it later, you are totally welcome to do that. Okay, so that's just a good one to wake up. Now we're gonna dig into some really like intense stuff if you're ready. I feel like you are. Okay. So we're going to talk about something called pure vowels. Repeat after me. Pure vowels. Yes. Okay. So pure vowels are, they come from Italian. Okay. Um, they're also the same in Spanish and some other languages. Um, if you think about the, lang the vowels that we have in English, A, E, I, O, U, especially if you're from Philly, which is where I'm from, um, the O and the U, they're like pretty ugly. So imagine I'm singing a song like, Jesus, I love you. Like, it's just not pretty. So there are things that we need to do to modify vowels to make them sound more pure. And the worship team this morning was so excellent at that. And I'm such a geek, but I was sitting there being like, like, this is awesome worship and also awesome pure vowels. Because <laughs> they sang so clearly. Every word that they sang, I understood what the word was. Which is important, right? If, you, if you're leading worship, don't you want people to hear you clearly so they can join with you? So, I want you to repeat after me. We're going to try some pure vowels together. E. 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 A. A. O. 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 That sounded great. So, 
Notice that when we said eh, it wasn't a. Do you hear the difference between those sounds? Eh versus a. Does anybody know what the difference is? Eh, a. Yes. Yes. Very good. You want to tell us what a diphthong is? Very good. So two vowels. So when you say a, you're actually saying a, and then you're saying e. And what diphthongs do is they ring. A, not pretty. So just, which, what's your name? Hannah. Hannah. So just like Hannah said, when we're singing, we want to add the second vowel in at the very end because that's a much prettier way to sing. So if you're singing like, um, change, that's a lot better than change, right? And then, of course, you get the NG in there, and that messes it up, too. <laughs> um, but when we practice pure vowels in our exercises and then very specifically apply them to our songs, it sounds so much better because we're not just ringing out the diphthongs. So that's why we want to practice pure vowels. We get one vowel sound per sound. That's all we get, and we practice doing that really beautifully and clearly. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so let's talk about what makes these sounds form in our mouths, okay? We're going to get really technical here. So I want everybody to go like this, like Home Alone. Ha! Yeah. Okay, now, that's a neutral ah vowel. What you have right here is you have a dropped jaw, which, by the way, you should always, always have a dropped jaw, no matter what vowel you're singing. Ah. Now, if I go ah, oh, ah, oh, and I keep my jaw dropped, what changes? Ah, oh. Your lips. What do your lips do? They form an O. Absolutely. Ah, oh. And how about ooh? Ah, oh, ooh. What happens to the ooh? Again, if you keep your jaw dropped, which you always should. What happens for the ooh? It might. Technically, your tongue should stay flat for all these. But your lips, your lips would change, right? Your lips actually get smaller. So here's what we don't do. We don't go, ah, ooh. We don't close our mouths. We keep our mouths open in terms of the jaw being dropped. But we just bring the lips in a little closer. Ah, oh, ooh. Do that with me. Ah, oh, Ooh, very good. Okay, now let's talk about the other vowels. Ah, and put your hands back here. Ah, eh. Keep your jaw dropped. This is tough. Ah, eh. What changes there? Your tongue. Yeah, what happens to your tongue? Yeah, it kind of like spreads out, especially in the front. Eh. So here's what a lot of people do, and it's incorrect. What a lot of people do to get an eh vowel is go like this. Eh. That doesn't help us. So the other side of pure vowels is that not only do they help us sound better, but they also protect our voices. Because when we do like weird things with our mouths that don't work according to how our mouths physically want to form those sounds, the sound gets sent back into our throat. And this is why a lot of times you might feel really tired after a worship set which you shouldn't, okay? Singing should not tire you out. If you do three services on Sunday, you should still have a voice Sunday night. And I think a lot of people think that's just like part of the process. Oh, like I sang a lot today, so like I lost my voice. That shouldn't be happening, okay? Um, and I, I struggled with this for a while, and I'm like, I'm breathing right. I'm not singing too high. I'm not belting too much. Like, why is this happening? And I went to a coach, and she was like, your pure vowels have gotten really lazy, you need to get back on the pure vowels train. And when I started doing that, I had no more strain or discomfort or loss of my voice after Sundays, okay? So this is really, really helpful. It helps us get our sound out. Okay, so from ah to eh, what changes? The tongue, okay? Now ah, eh, e. What changes there? E. Again, the tongue. So E, I'm going to tell you right now, E is the hardest for most people because there's even more of a temptation to go E, Jesus. But can you try this with me? Keep your jaw dropped and go, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, you feel how open that is? And it really lets your sound travel out. So the only difference with an E uh and an E vowel is your tongue. It is not your jaw being closed. It is not your lips being wider. 
okay? So let's try all of these together. We're going to start with E. We're going to go E, 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 A, A. Now we're going to change the lips. O, O. 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 Okay, let's sing this. So we're going to sing all of these on one note at a time. E, A, O. Wow, you guys sound good. Same thing. release any tension that might be in your face or your shoulders, anywhere in your body. If you feel like, uh, like, just let it go. nice that sound is? So here's another layer to the pure vowel thing. Not only does it protect our voices and make the words sound better, it also brings unity to our sound. So if you're singing with your team and someone's singing eh and the other person singing a and the other person singing yay, <laughs> that's not going to sound good, right? And what are we supposed to do as the church? We're supposed to be one voice, united, right? And we want to have a sound that is not distracting, that's very easy for people to join. And doing pure vowels with your team is a game changer. Right, Becky? Amen. Amen. Becky's our worship coordinator at our church, City Life, and she's amazing. Um, And when we started implementing this with our team, we just, we saw like such a beautiful, like pure sound come out of that. Okay, so if you were going to warm up, if you were going to do like a full vocal warm-up session, you would start with something like the hums, then you could go into something like the pure vowels, and you'd want to start in the middle of your range, okay? And then you would go up a little bit higher. So if you started on C, maybe you'd go up to like B, and then you can come back down. When we go down after we've come up, that's how we build muscle in the voice. So it's really good, whatever comes up, to come down. And you could go down a little bit farther from where you started. So maybe you start on C, go up to B, and maybe you get, go down to like A or something like that, okay? The most important thing, again, is that it's in the middle of your range at the beginning of your practice. So that's something that you could take as kind of a model for practice time and do that. We're speeding through it a little bit today. Is that Okay. All right, so let's talk about range and flexibility. So what is your range? Like how high and low. Yeah, how high and low you can sing. Is your range the same for your whole life, or can it change? It changes. It it absolutely changes, and it should change. It should grow. And we never push the range, but we do gently stretch it over time. So today, if your highest note is here, or for the dudes, if your highest note is maybe like here... Mm -hmm. You're not going to try to sing like here and here tomorrow. But maybe you'll sing those notes in six months. So it's incremental. It's a little bit. We don't push it. We just try it. Like, let me just like try to touch that note today and see if it's there for me. And if not, that's okay. But it'll probably be there in a couple weeks if I keep practicing. Okay? So that's how we treat the range. It's gentle and it's a slow process of growth. And then what's flexibility? So I promise I'm not a heathen, but I listen to secular music. Ariana Grande has a lot of flexibility. When she does those runs, also Mariah Carey, Whitney. Okay, think about these people who are like doing gymnastics with their voice. That's all about flexibility. And there's a word called melisma. That means one syllable on multiple notes. So all of those runs that we all love and riffs and all of that, those are melismas. And when you practice your flexibility, you're more able to do things like that. And it doesn't have to be for the purpose of like being flashy and doing runs. It's really just for the purpose of making it easier to sing any melody that comes your way, okay? So here's a really good exercise for range and flexibility. It's called a scale to the ninth. So who knows how many notes are in a scale? Eight, good, if you include the octave at the top, we go do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then if we go up to the ninth, we add one more, re, 
Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re. So that's a scale to the ninth. And this is a really great way to practice your range because you're going up really high on one breath. And then we're also gonna come down that whole distance. And it's good for your flexibility because the more you practice exercises like this, the more you can increase the tempo. So maybe today you can do it at like 90 beats per minute, but then maybe tomorrow you try it at like 92 and the next day you try it at 94, then maybe like next month you're at like 110 and now you can sing like pretty fast and it sounds great. And don't try to increase the tempo before you can do it perfectly at the lower tempo. Okay, so we're gonna start at like a low tempo today. We're gonna just pick a vowel. When you do these exercises, you can pick any pure vowel. Anytime you do an exercise, it should be on a pure vowel. Let's do ah for now. We're gonna start here. Ah, good. And if you feel a break into your head voice or your falsetto, that is okay. Don't try to belt the whole thing. Belting is not healthy. There are ways that we can get around it and make something sound like a belt, but in a healthier way. But this is not the time that we're doing that. So for now, just use your head voice when you need to. Let's try that together. Ah. Now we're moving up. Ah, good. Let's change the vowel to E. Drop your jaw. E. Good. E. Good. Now, this is one of those things where what got you here won't get you there. As you go higher, you need to drop your jaw even more because we need more space to reach the high notes especially on a, a really bright vowel like E. E. Very good. Now let's do E. E. Good. O. O. feel so we're working on our range there and then the faster you do it the more you'll be working on your flexibility okay so so far we've done a humming exercise that's just a good general warm-up to make sure we're like singing in a healthy way then we looked at some pure vowels and then we did some scales to the ninth for range and flexibility okay now let's go on to one that's just like a little bit fun, and this helps get our articulators going. And I will ask you to spread out more for this one um, because you might spit, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Normally, I would say it's really good if you spit, but, you know, these days, please don't spit on people, but... <laughs> okay, good. So this is for diction. What is diction? Yep. Uh-huh, pronunciation, how you pronounce the words. Again, just like pure vowels, if we don't have clear consonants, are they going to know what we're singing? What you really want is you want someone to be able to close their eyes and still be able to sing with you because they can hear the words. And even if they can't sing with you because maybe they don't know the next word, at least they can hear what you're singing and they don't have to look at the screen, even though we love being able to have worship or lyrics on the screen. Okay, so... We're going to do a series of short words that have a consonant, a vowel, and then they end with an M. Normally, we try to sing on a vowel as long as we possibly can, but on this exercise, it's a little different. We're going to go right to the M, and again, that's going to give us that hum effect, which not only is a healthy way to warm up because of this, but it also brings the resonance to the front of our face. And I don't know if we're going to have time to talk about this more in depth today, but I'll just give you a little bit of this that... When I talked about going into your head voice versus your belt voice, and then there's like another alternative, that alternative is something called your mask or your mix voice. And this is for both men and women. It's kind of a mix of like the head voice or the falsetto and the chest in terms of the way it sounds. But the way you sing it is by bringing the resonance to the front of your face, like ah, versus ha ah, or ha. Ah. So the first one was the best way to do it, right? Because if you always sing in your head voice, it's maybe not as powerful. If you always sing in your chest voice, you're going to hurt yourself. But if you can start to find that mask voice, 
that's where we have like a lot of resonance and a really clear like pingy sound. Um, and this exercise can start to help with that because that M will force the resonance to the front of your face. So we're gonna go like this. Bum, 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 bum. So notice how I'm not going bum, 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 bum. I'm going right to the M, okay? Here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Lots of B, okay? Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Good. Now we're going to do gym. Gym, 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 gym. Gym, 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 gym. Gym, 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 gym. Jim, 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 now Kim. Kim, 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 Kim. Kim, 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 Kim. Kim, 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 Kim. Are your lips kind of like itchy and buzzing? That's good. That means you're doing it right. Let's come down. Kim, 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 Kim. Kim, 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 Kim. Now we're going to do zum. Zum, 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 zum. Now we're going to make it a little harder. Spum, okay? Spum, 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 spum. Spum, 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 spum. Spum, 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 spum. Splum. Splum, 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 splum. Splum, 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 splum. Splum. Splum, 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 splum. Very good. I know that's a tongue twister, but it really gets things moving and, and awake. And I think that if you can sing splum at that tempo, you're ready for any song, right? <laughs> okay, so this breakout session is called Vocal Technique and Application because vocal technique is no good if we don't know how to apply it. So let's sing a song. Yay! Yay! Okay, let's think of what song. Let's do, let's do Living Hope. Okay, you guys know Living Hope? Yes, ish. How about What a Beautiful Name? Yes. yes. All right, I want everybody to know the song we do. Okay, good. So let's sing the chorus of What a Beautiful Name. And let's talk through the pure vowels that are in this song. And when we can't find a pure vowel in a word, we're going to find the pure vowel that's the closest to it, and we're going to modify to singing on that vowel. Okay, so here's what that looks like. What a beautiful name it is. Everybody say that. What a beautiful name it is. So how about on the word what? What do you think is the closest pure vowel to what? Uh? What's the closest? Ah, uh, yeah, what. Okay. How about uh? Ah, uh, good. Beautiful. We have three there. Beautiful. What are those three vowels? So let's take the first syllable. Bu. That one's tricky. Tell us about that. You know your stuff. Yes, I love it. Uh, ooh. Right. Very good. Thank you, Hannah. So um, we can't say beautiful. <laughs> that would be weird. So when we're doing pure vowels, we still have to sing the right word again so that it sounds like the word. Um, so we are going to sing bu, but when we get to the ooh part, let's make sure that it's a good ooh, okay? So we have what, that's an ah. Uh, which is an ah, uh, and then bu. How about t? Eh. Uh, okay, eh. Uh, not e, because if we say beautiful, that's kind of weird, right? So beauty. And then how about full? This could be a couple. I could see two really good options for this. Either ah, uh, full, or eh, uh, full. I think eh uh, is maybe a little more appropriate. So let's say what? Ah, uh, beautiful. How about name? This one is so hard. That's that diphthong, A. What should we do there? A. Uh. 
nah. And then we're going to bring the diphthong at the last second. Name, not name. Name. Okay, so let's just do this. We're going to take out the consonants, and we're just going to say the pure vowels for what a beautiful name, okay? Ah, ah, ooh, eh, eh, eh. Ah, ah, ooh, eh, eh, eh. Now let's put the consonants back, but keep the vowels just as pure. What a beautiful name. Good. Now, when we sing it, it's not going to sound that weird. Because when we sing, we're holding notes out. It's different than when we're speaking. And that's why we have to modify when we're singing, because they just sound different. So can we sing what a beautiful name it is? What a beautiful name it is. Now let's take those consonants out. Ah, good. I think I missed one. I think I missed the O. One, two. Ah, <laughs> Now let's put the consonants back and sing it together. What a beautiful name it is. Good. Okay, now I'm not going to sing this time so I can hear you. Good, do it again. What a beautiful name. Oh my gosh, that sounds so pure. It sounds choral, right? Do you hear that? Um, and great choruses all sing pure vowels. You have to if you're in a chorus. Okay, so now let's talk about the name of. How about for the? Ah, uh, or eh. Either one works. Let's do eh. The, the. See how we're kind of modifying it? I'm not really saying the. It's kind of like I'm making my mouth do an eh, but I'm thinking the, the, name. How about of? Uh, of, of, Jesus. Okay, this is one of the worst pronounced words, and it's the most important one. So it's not Jesus, it's not Jesus, it's not Jesus, it's Jesus. G, that's an E, right? And what's sa? Ah, Jesus, the name of Jesus. What's Christ? That's another diphthong, I. So what are we going to sing on for, the most, the, for most of the time? Ah, Christ, my, my king. So I think an E vowel is better there than an E vowel, king. Okay, so can we try that much? What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name, name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. All right, here we go. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. How does that sound to you? Do you like the way you sound? I think it sounds really, really beautiful. Now let's add another element to this, okay? So this is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but you guys are ready for it, okay? We're going to add a bit of a smile, which is so important because when you're leading worship, you want to look like you like it. Otherwise, do you think they're going to want to do it with you? Absolutely not. But the way we typically smile, like say cheese, it's not a great way to sing clearly with pure vowels and keep our voices healthy, right? So let's try this together. I want you to do your nice ah your dropped jaw, and then I want you to smize. What does that mean? Smile. smile with your eyes, okay? Smile with your eyes and bring a little lift to the apples of your cheeks, but without stretching like this. So, like, ha, ha. Yeah, it's just like a, like a breath of fresh air. Ha, ha. Okay, so let's do beautiful name again. Let's keep our pure vowels, and let's just add ha, okay? Here we go. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. Let's keep going. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. So that sounded even better than last time. Not only does the smile look engaging and welcoming and inviting, it also makes our sound better because it gives us a little bit of a brighter tone.
So we don't want to study pure vowels and be perfect at pure vowels and then just sound really like dark and coral, right? So the smile is what adds that like awesome element of like, it's appropriate for the style of the music we're singing. It just brings a little bit of brightness, a little bit of sparkle, okay? So what we talked about, and I'm going to leave a couple minutes for questions if you have any. What we talked about today is just a, a little piece of vocal technique, but if you take those things and you apply them, I recommend six days a week, spending maybe like 15 minutes a day on exercises. In the morning is the, the best time to do it because then you're ready for anything that comes that day. If you do that six days a week, even in like two, three weeks, you're going to see a major difference. Do you believe that? Yes. Great. All right, so do you guys have any questions? Yes. Do you do any um, individual training? Yes. You can email me. Okay. Yeah, I would love to do that. Can we talk about belting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, on a Sunday morning, and you know you're up there, you're going to be jumping and arching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't feel like it's really lifting me up to where I need to be yeah. on a Sunday morning. So what would, is there a, a specific vocal exercise that you recommend? Yeah, so the straw is really good for, like, warming up, um, but it's not necessarily, necessarily going to increase your range or your flexibility. Um, so that's probably why you're not seeing a difference with that. Um, so I actually don't recommend belting. Um, belting is taking the chest voice. So when you feel like, if you go like, ha, like everybody go, ha, you feel that sound resonating in your chest. Belting is taking that sound higher than it naturally wants to go in your voice. And that point is different for everyone. But if I go like, ha, like it's going to break at some point. I'm not going to be able to go higher. And if I try to go higher, it's not going to sound pretty and it's also not healthy. So if you have a habit of belting, like a lot of us do, and like I definitely used to, I would recommend working with a vocal coach and, and trying to get out of that habit. And that's where the mask comes in. So the mask, try this with me. Ah, mama, hey, I want it. That's your mask voice. So it's a little bit brighter than a belt, and it's way healthier than a belt, and this works for both men and women. It brings the resonance to the front of your face. So I would offer that to you as an alternative to the belt, and I would have you practice some exercises on, like, sounds like that, like, yeah, where you can feel it coming forward, and you, you'll find that you can actually sing much higher than you can with your belt, but it sounds more like a belt. Because you don't want to just have like belt, 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 that voice, right? That doesn't, you know, that doesn't sound good. And that's why we end up pushing the bell because we don't want it to break into something that sounds weaker. But the mask is like, the mask is the best thing that will ever happen to your voice. And it takes some time to find it. I remember the day that I found it. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so be patient with yourself. But that's what I would recommend. Yes, it is the same. They're, they're, Different terms, they kind of mean the same thing. If you say mix, it usually means like you're, you're thinking of it as a mix of your head voice and your chest voice. If you're thinking of it as a mask, you're thinking of where in your body it resonates, which is in your, like, in your mask. It's in the sinus cavities in your face. It's like your voice is little, literally resonating through them. So it's the same thing, but just two different ways of looking at it. Yes? Okay. Okay. I do. Yeah, that was, that was my first love. Um, I, I started doing musical theater when I was 10, and that was going to be my, you know, my life plan. Um, and then I, I changed it. I ended up going to school for, for jazz instead, um, and then ended up leading worship and falling more in love with this side of music. But I still love musical theater. I'm a huge nerd for that. <laughs> it's also a really good way to train your voice. So you can sing musical theater, you can sing anything. Yes? How do you condition your whistle tones? Oh my goodness. I actually don't spend a lot of time on whistle tones. That's such a good question though. Um, I've definitely gone up there, but I've never really tried to sing like that in a song. So I wouldn't be the person to help you with that probably. 
but I love, I love that question. So whistle tones are like, if you go so high that your voice does not have, it's not like your full voice anymore, and it goes into what sounds like a whistle, and that's when, think of like Mariah Carey or Ariana, they can go up there, and it's like, that doesn't even sound like a voice, it sounds like, like an instrument. Um, that's, that's what that is, but girl, if you can do that, like, maybe you can show me some stuff. <laughs> All right, well, this has been so fun. Ow. <laughs> you guys sound awesome. It was so cool to hear you sing. Um, I'll stick around if you wanna talk, if you wanna ask any more questions. You have my email address if you wanna reach out and talk more. Um, and then I also have the cards if you wanna grab one for Ready, Set, Worship. Um, and thank you so much. Give yourselves a hand. Woohoo!